This video shows that, contrary to the common opinion, Einstein's relativity cannot derive the mass-energy relationship E equals mc squared. That failure is a direct consequence of the failure whereby the author obviously thinks, quite incorrectly, that he has derived a new law of motion when a constant force is applied to a system already moving uniformly and rectilinearly, that is, at a constant velocity, in the stationary system. So this moving system is already moving uniformly and rectilinearly, and a force is applied to it. Please pay attention. It is not the uniform rectilinear motion that the author has in mind. It is the law of motion after the constant force is applied to the uniformly rectilinearly moving system that is of concern to the author. This difference between these two motions is starkly confused when the author attempts to derive the mass energy equation E equals mc squared. We'll talk about this confusion in a moment. So again, we have a system in a uniform rectilinear motion and this system may remain in this state of motion indefinitely. That's on the one hand. However, if at a given moment of that uniform rectilinear motion a constant force is applied to that body, that body finds itself in a different state of motion from that long at all. Further, uniform rectilinear motion is akin to rest. A system in such motion experiences no acceleration and therefore it is an inertial system. An inertial system allows the application of the first postulate or the so-called principle of relativity to it. Therefore, it would have been enough for Einstein to apply just the first postulate to the first set of equations in part 10 of his 1905 paper to represent them in the moving system and vice versa. However then, a purely trivial solution would have been the result and there would have been no discovery at all, as is really the case. In his desire to make a discovery at any rate, Einstein redundantly uses Lorentz transformations for such representation, and as a result, ends up deriving two distinctly different expressions for the law of motion of one and the same body in one and the same system. It's an indisputable absolute truth that a body in the stationary system cannot obey at the same time two completely different laws of motion. And therefore, Einstein's relativity fails fatally right at this point, prior to any further attempts to justify it experimentally or otherwise. Therefore, as already said, it is out of the question to suggest, as the media excessively submits, that Einstein's relativity derives mass energy equation E equals mc squared, because the theory itself is invalid to begin with. Just out of curiosity, it will be shown now that the derivation of E equals mc squared fails also on a purely formal basis due to the already mentioned confusion between the two kinds of motion. The minute Einstein saw that Lorentz transformations give a different result than the principle of relativity gave, he should have abandoned the whole idea of this kind of relativity. As already said, it's an absolute truth 
that one single body in one single system cannot obey two different laws of motion at the same time as Einstein relativity derives. Deriving such conflicting result invalidates altogether the whole theory. Einstein, however, ignores that fatal discrepancy and goes right ahead and uses the Lorentz transformed result, leaving the reader with the impression that he has derived mass-energy relationship. He hasn't. And the only thing he has achieved is to confuse two unmistakably different velocities, taking them as if they were the same velocity, and then solving an integral under such incorrect premise. The author reorders the Lorentz transformed x-axis component of the law, shown on page 918 of his 1905 paper, and then rewrites it in the following way. Now see that Lorentz transformed x-axis component shown again here in the upper right corner. Henceforth, out of respect to Einstein, we will keep using his own notation. Also using the notation in the original 1905 paper seems methodologically less confusing. Thus, Mass is denoted by mu instead of m, and the speed of light is denoted by capital V instead of C. It is immediately seen that this is an expression for the x-axis component of Newton's second law. Although it's trivial, it may probably help in this analysis to be reminded that when the force f sub x is constant, then the acceleration a, this force f sub x, imparts on the free body, that is the second derivative of x over t, is also constant. However, the velocity of the force f sub x induces on the body is not constant, it increases. And uh, application of a constant force to a free body gives rise to accelerated motion. Multiplying this force by the infinitesimal displacement dx gives infinitesimal work, which has the same units as energy and then integrating it over the whole path we get the expression for the work done as a result of the application of that constant force. Now let's get back to the Lorentz transformed expression of Newton's second law written for the x-axis component along which Einstein observes the motion. This equality can have both sides integrated. Then we substitute the second derivative of x over t by its equivalent first derivative of velocity induced by the constant force over t. And it is right here where this blue colored velocity appears, differing from the constant velocity of the uniformly rectilinearly moving system. This blue-colored velocity here has nothing to do with the uniform rectilinear uniform motion. It is not causing it and must not be confused with it as Einstein does. But this can also be written as shown and that newly formed dx dt also has the meaning of blue-colored velocity. And, after slight reordering, exchanging the places of V and DV, 
we finally get the equation for the energy W shown in the paper. So now we know where the integral in the last part of Einstein's 1905 paper comes from. This is the integral which purportedly is equal to the mass energy equation. And there's an obvious typo corrected. A special attention should be paid now to the fact that the velocity colored in blue is associated with the force applied. Blue colored velocity is not constant and its value depends on the value of the force applied. The force with which the blue colored velocity is associated is not the cause for the velocity which will be shown in a moment and which is colored in red to emphasize its different nature. The red colored velocity to be shown in a moment is constant and is the velocity of the uniform rectilinear motion which exists even if no force is applied. We will now focus on the integral after the second equality. And we'll present coefficient beta explicitly. Now again, it cannot be repeated too many times that the velocity colored in blue is associated with the force applied. It refers to the increasing velocity under the action of the force of the electron with respect to a given system. Blue colored velocity is not constant and its value depends on the value of the force applied. On the other hand, the velocity colored in red is associated with the coefficient beta. It is the constant velocity the moving system travels with respect to the stationary system. Einstein has confused the two velocities, taking them to signify the same thing. However, as seen, the two velocities have nothing to do with each other. Now, because the red velocity is constant, the entire coefficient beta is constant, and therefore we can factor it out of the integral. But this leads to a result differing from the result Einstein obtains. which is a wrong formula for the kinetic energy in the stationary system and is not at all the formula well known prior to Einstein of the mass-energy relationship which the paper wrongly claims to have derived. As seen, if one correctly honors the physical difference between the velocity of uniform rectilinear motion on the one hand and the changing velocity induced by the constant force applied to the body on the other, the value of the integral is not as shown in Einstein's 1905 paper, which clearly demonstrates that Einstein's relativity cannot derive the mass-energy relationship E equals mc squared.